Well, welcome to this slightly different session. Um, I'm Russ. Many people would know me as a bit of a, a laser geek. I've spent most of my retirement years investigating how lasers work, the technology behind them, the business of lasers in China, all sorts of things related to lasers. Today we're going to do something a bit different. Um, we're going to go and visit this company here, Tech Autos in Colchester. Um, it's run by a guy called Josh. I'm not going to tell you too much about him. You can go to his website there. You can read for yourself what his business is all about, about the superpowers that he's got. Yes, he does have superpowers. Look at me. When I was in the queue, the great creator just said to me, what do you want to be? I said, a playboy. No, he said, I don't think so. He said, engineer, that's you. And look, ugliness, greyness, oldness, fatness. Those are the gifts that he gave me. About a year ago, I came into contact with Josh because he'd built a machine, a big monster laser machine for cutting carpets because his business is classic car carpets. He makes carpet sets for all British cars from about 1940s onwards. Now, one of his superpowers is that he has a photographic memory almost. You've only got to show him a piece of carpet, the shape of the carpet, and he'll say, that's a 1946 Triumph Herald and it comes from a rear footwell. It means nothing to me. That's a sort of photographic database memory that he is endowed with. I don't have that. I've just got two gray cells left and there's a big hole between them and everything disappears down there. So my retention is pretty close to nil now. Enough about my problems. This guy had a problem on a completely different plane. He'd never seen a laser machine before, but he decided that cutting carpets with a pair of scissors, chalk, and a template was not the thing of the future. And that somehow he had to get onto the future. And he decided that he'd buy a little diode laser and do some tests and he found that he could cut carpet with them. Great, I'm going to build myself a big machine. With zero knowledge of lasers and building machines, he went on to various forums and found out how people have built their own laser machines. We're talking about something that may be the size of a kitchen table that would be the biggest that most people have built. No, he wanted something like the size of an aircraft carrier deck. It worked, but he then needed some help to get it up and running. He called me in and when I walked through the door, I thought I was looking at a dinosaur. It was monstrous. It was over-engineered on top of over-engineering. It's taken a little bit of time to get it into a, a good working condition. Today, we're gonna to pop in and see him and I'm gonna show you the machine that we've almost finished with. There's still lots to do, but the basic machine is now a good, reliable running piece of kit. That's what I think most of you guys will be interested in, the laser aspect of it, but if you've got friends that have got classic cars, then by all means, give this guy a call because he may well be able to help you. He's got templates for nearly every British classic car that ever existed from about 1940 onwards. He also knows every shape of every bit of carpet in every car from that date onwards. The, the shape of those bits of carpet are meaningless to me. I'm interested in how I can physically help him to cut the carpet with a laser machine, a beam of light. Because after all, that's all a laser beam is. And today you will see that. So if you've got an interest in classic cars, you may well be interested in seeing how this technology works to your benefit. It's very cost effective because it's very economical on, on use of material. Now I suspect that because my video goes to a lot of people in the States, there will be quite a lot of people in the USA that will see this video. Now, what I can say is that Josh has not got many templates for classic American cars. He still knows a lot about them, but he just doesn't have the templates. Now, if you've got a classic car and are in the States and want replacement carpets, you've got three options. Number one, you could take the carpets out of your car and send them to him and he will template them, send, make you a new set of carpets and send back your originals. Maybe you can cut paper or card templates and send them to him. If you've got those skills, you can produce a DXF file directly for him of all the templates that you want for your car. You might think that Josh is just dealing with British cars. That is true, but British cars have been exported all around the world and he deals with virtually every country that's got an owner of a classic British car. So dealing with the USA or other countries is not a problem to him. It's just that he might not have the templates for your particular car. Wherever you are and whoever you are, give Josh a call. I've never known him say no to anybody. He will always try and help you. That said, welcome to Tech Autos in Colchester. The first stage of the process is to look at the orders 
and decide what colour and type of carpets he's got to cut. He will then choose all the templates associated with those particular cars and that particular colour carpet and will build them into a nested format that will run efficiently on his machine. He then downloads the program to the machine and uses the powerful stepper motor to drag the heavy carpet along the bed of the machine. Then quick check to make sure that the carpet is lined up with the program. And away we go. Now you'll notice the head dropping down. The plastic shoe tends to sit on the surface of the carpet because the bed of the machine is not absolutely flat all the way over its whole area. And the shoe rides up and down to keep a constant focal distance. Now here you see the laser tube itself in action. The pink beam, when it switches on, is not the laser beam itself. It's like the engine. It's the thing that creates the laser beam, which is an invisible beam that bounces off a mirror at the end, across to that mirror there, and then back along the whole length of the machine at 45 degrees, sending the beam down to a, a, a lens which is sitting there inside that nozzle. You can see the shoe is just clear of the carpet there because in this particular carpet we don't need the focal distance to be as accurate. And there we go, job done. These shapes mean absolutely nothing to me, Josh. He knows every piece of carpet from every car from 1940 onwards, any classic car. No. I mean, to me, this could be something. To him, it's a piece of scrap. That, by the way, is... Okay. No, no, I don't want to know. I don't care. Please don't tell me. It's just going to confuse me. I won't be able to sleep tonight. Okay. Now, to me, that's just a piece of carpet with some holes cut in it, and I'm very pleased at the way the laser has cut it. What is this, Josh? It's a, it's a VW Gold Mark I Cabriolet front footwell set, which will need to be sewn together, those darts sewn together, to create the shape, and then once it's finally sewn together, it's then fully bound all the way round, apart from the top edge. And what does binding mean? This is an example of binding. What's this for? That's a Rover P6 manual driver's side football mat. It runs from front to rear on a Rover P6. You so you have to have it bound or is that customer requirement? Well, it's, it's a bi binding is pretty much a necessity on most carpets. This auto velour here, it stands on its own. It doesn't fray, but this is tufted deep part. That over there, which you'll see in a minute. And this bit? And that's, that's a rubber heel pad that I make to the and side. And you fit it on there? And I, I, I glue it on first and then my machinist stitch it so on. So on. Oh it look, it's also got underlay on the back. Yes, because that's a requirement for the Rovers. Right. But it can be retrofitted to any other cars I make. You know, it's not just for cars that had it originally. These darts here, they're going to be pulled together in some way. Like this, for example. I've yes. got an example this, here. Which... Yeah, like here. Yeah. This is a Ford console rear um, footwell mat and rear tunnel. So this comes up like this and it will sit like that and that will sit on the hump and you'll eventually, once it's in the car, it will flow better. Now look, I don't want too much detail. Just enough please, Josh. What's this? It's what? I know it's carpet. It looks like... That's the minimum it, detail I can give you. It, it feels <laughs> a bit velvety. It's hessian backed. It's a, it's a tight tufted pile. Um, with a hessian backing. Carpet is not the sort of stuff you'd really want to cut with a laser machine because, hey, it's got different materials on it everywhere. So we've got a pile on the top here which is about three millimetres thick. We've got this fabric backing on here which I understand is hessian and then it's got all this glue that holds it together. So we've got a multiplicity of materials that we're trying to cut through. You can only go as fast as the laser will cut it and this is a difficult material to cut. This is a really lovely tufted carpet. There's I would, wouldn't mind that in my lounge, to be honest. It really feels like a luxury carpet. This, again, is a difficult carpet to cut because the tufts are put into this weed mat membrane and then they've got some backing on it as well, along with some latex. There's no fast way to do this. It's much faster than doing this. OK, it was a big enough challenge to cut the carpet on its own. So what we see now is a piece of underlay being attached to the carpet. This is a real challenge, this carpet, because it's about three quarters of an inch thick. Cutting carpet offers many interesting challenges. First of all, you don't want to burn the pile. You just want to cut through the backing and maybe the underlay that's underneath. So the machine has to be set up very carefully. 
This machine has got a floating focus system on it, where there's a plastic shoe that sits on the surface of the carpet. The nozzle has to be set up so that it penetrates into the carpet and just cuts the vacuum material. Although it looks as though there are flames and you're burning the carpet, the nozzle is penetrating into the carpet and what you'll see is a reflection of the cutting process that's taking place on the backing of the carpet. Extracting the fumes from this process is rather interesting. First of all, there's extraction underneath the carpet and where the plastic shoe floats on top of the carpet, there's positive pressure down that tube that has been blown into that shoe. So the shoe moves up and down relative to the black static fume extraction system on the right hand side. And it is the positive pressure inside the shoe that's blowing the fumes into the static extraction system. So here we see the debris that's been collected by the filter after that cutting process. And additionally, there is a secondary filter. So built into that filtering system, we've got a very small hairdryer fan running at very high speed, which is blowing the fumes away from the head. So yeah, we've got a perfect match along here now because they've been cut together. Voila. Then it'll be bound round the edge, which will hold it all together, the glue holds it in the middle. And that's millboard. It's three millimetre hard card that's used for things like door cards, boot boards, interior panel boards. As you can see, cutting with a beam of light is very versatile in the materials that it can handle. Now certain carpets fit into standard boxes, but quite often, like in this case, they're a small product which has to go into a special box. Well I'm just back in the office now, editing the video. I hope you enjoyed that visit to Tech Autos in Colchester. Um, Josh Ingram is a very interesting person, and although the machine is working well, I think the next year of my life is going to be involved heavily with uh, the bells and whistles that he's yet to imagine going on his machine. So thanks very much for your time and I hope you found the subject interesting. Bye for now.